cleaning out your Mac storage is a little more tricky than it was about 10 years ago. macOS has added a lot of different features and background file management stuff that it can be difficult figuring out where all your space has gone. And especially if you have 128 gigabyte or even a 256 gigabyte SSD, you may be out of storage pretty quick. So let me show you a few different ways that you can find and clean out some of the old stuff you have on your Mac. Funny enough, the fact that Apple's built-in storage in its computers over the last few years is so fast, you may not even notice or realize that you're running out of space until you see something like this pop up. And in earlier days, you could easily feel the performance drag on a laptop or a computer that started having less and less free space, especially if you got down to 10 or 15% free. But on these guys, you don't even feel it until the bitter end. Let's just start off with something easy. We can look at the applications folder on the Mac and see if there's any applications that we don't need or no longer use, and we can just get rid of them. So to do that, go to the applications folder and then just make sure you're in list view. And from here, you can go ahead and click on size and you can sort it by biggest to smallest. And so you can see right here at the top of the list is this install macOS Ventura. Now this is not something I need anymore. I downloaded it to create a VM so I can actually get rid of this. So to get rid of it, you can select it and hit command delete, or you can just go ahead and drag it to the trash like you would any other file. So that was a really obvious one, something that was big and in there that I just did not need. But there might be others in here that you just don't use at all. So for me, I never use iMovie. I'm going to delete that and enter my password and I'll just go down the line. I don't use GarageBand and you can use shift click or command click to select multiple things. I do use Keynote sometimes. I do use all of these. I don't use pages. I don't use Descript anymore. So I can just go ahead and delete these and enter your password. And those are now going to be in the trash where you can right click and empty trash. Now that right there is actually going to free up quite a bit of disk space, but you can actually go even further with the applications. Now I went ahead and put all of those applications back into the applications folder so I can show you. And what I'm gonna bring up is Clean My Mac X. And this application actually does a few different things, but we're gonna look at the uninstaller first. So if you open up this application, Clean My Mac X, and go to uninstaller, again, you're going to see a list of all of your applications. You can sort by size or name, however you prefer. And to delete software, you're just going to select the one you want to uninstall, click uninstall, and it will remove it for you. And if you don't know how applications are installed on the Mac, you're probably thinking, why do I need to do that if I could just delete it from the applications folder? Well, deleting it from the applications folder is just one step in the actual removal of an application from the computer. It doesn't get all of the settings files, all the little things that it puts around the system to actually function. It just leaves them. Now you can go through and manually find all of those files and delete them manually. Most websites or most companies will have instructions on their website about how to fully delete all of the other little files that are installed. But Clean My Mac X will actually help you do that. So let me show you. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my applications folder and I'm going to look at this application right here. This is Citrix Workspace. It's something for enterprise IT. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command Delete and just go ahead and remove it. I'll type in my password and that file is now in the trash. Now it's in the trash and I could delete it and it would be gone except for some other little files. So now in Clean My Mac X, you're not going to see that application listed here in the applications list, but you will see over here, leftovers. And what this is, these are essentially abandoned files, files that no longer have an application associated with them. So Citrix Workspace is in the trash, it's going to be deleted, but there's other things in here that won't be. So here, for example, is a couple of files for Citrix that are just not going to go anywhere. They're going to stay on my system consuming, yes, a small amount of space, but just stuff accumulating and collecting on your SSD. Also another one down here. So all of this stuff is from that Citrix application, but it's just going to stay there on the SSD unless you get rid of those. So if you've already deleted the application outside of Clean My Mac X, you can actually go in here and click these items and click remove just like you would the application itself. However, if you removed the application from here, you would actually remove the application and all of those extra little files. Clean My Mac X is not free. I think it's something like $35 or you can get it in a subscription Mac application service called Setapp, but it is useful and it has a couple of other features as well. Real quick for just a general overview, you can click on system junk and scan and it's going to look for some common items, some caches and other things that you just don't need on your computer. Review details, so right here it's gonna show you cache files and that's gonna be things for like Safari and messages and just 
things that the computer needs temporarily to show you files or get you things faster. Pretty much everything listed in the user cache files category can be deleted without any issues because they'll get reloaded or rebuilt as needed. So I went ahead and cleaned up and got rid of a few applications and brought my free space up to 22 gigabytes. So a little bit of breathing room. I have a number of other ways that we can actually clean out the storage, but first, it's probably time to get rid of your old outdated office chair and check out today's sponsor, Sihu. When you're working at your desk for many hours a day, like I am, your body screams for a good chair. The M18 offers all the features you need to get through work sessions that go all day or into the night. To help with back aches, the contoured mesh backrest conforms to your body perfectly, but you also get dual adjustable lumbar support that can be adjusted both horizontally and vertically. This allows the Sihu to adapt to the shape of your spine and give you the best, most comfortable seating position. When I'm working on a late night video edit, I really appreciate all the features of the M18. The adjustable headrest can raise up more than three and a half inches and tilt back and forth to align with your neck and help support your head. When you combine this with the multiple recline angles up to 126 degrees, you can find the most relaxing angle for taking a break. Just don't let your boss catch you. So it's time to reward your hard work with comfort by checking out the M18 today using the link in the description below. And my thanks to Sihu for sponsoring this video. Now we're gonna look at system settings or system preferences, depending on the version of macOS that you have. But I am running Ventura, so I'm going to system settings, and then I'm going down to general, and then storage. And from here, you're going to get a breakdown on the computer of things taking up storage on the Mac, along with a few different recommendations. Now, if you're using an operating system before Ventura, you can get the same information by going to About This Mac. We're gonna to go to the Storage tab and click Manage. And here you're gonna see most of the same types of information we're gonna show on the Ventura side, including recommendations, iCloud Drive, messages, and so on. So just a little bit different way to get to the same information on a version before Ventura. And we'll get to the recommendations in just a second, but at the top you see applications, and of course we already went through how to remove applications, so we'll skip that. Then I have some developer tools on here, which I could remove some documents. You can see that messages is taking up 10 gigabytes of storage on this Mac, which is quite a bit. And if we scroll down, there's music creation, parallels VM, that is for virtual machines that I have on here. And then photos is also taking up 10 gigabytes of storage. And there's ways that we can reduce some of this. Now, the first thing to do though, is going to be looking at the recommendations up at the top. And you can see here, we have optimized storage for Apple TV. This setting just says, hey, once you're done watching it, should we just delete it because you can always get it again from the server? Yes, is probably the answer. So we'll just click on optimize on the right. It's gonna tell you exactly what I just said and click optimize. That means any show or movie that you've already watched using the TV app will then be removed from your local storage. And the next thing to look at is empty trash automatically. And if you have a lot of things just sitting in your trash can that you never actually delete, it's sitting there taking up storage. So you can turn on this setting to automatically remove anything that's been in there for 30 days or longer. The next thing to look at is empty trash automatically. So if you have a lot of things just sitting in your trash bin that you actually never delete, then those files are still sitting there taking up space. So if you turn this on, it will automatically delete anything that's been in there for more than 30 days. So if this sounds like something you could use, go ahead and turn it on. Next, we have documents and you can see I have nearly 80 gigabytes of files in my user folder. So I'm going to click the I and see a list of all of the large files. And again, you can sort by size or name and see what are the largest files taking up space. From here, you can go ahead and right click and delete to remove those files. You can also see a list of all of your downloads files sitting in your downloads folder. You can see unsupported apps. This is if you migrated from an Intel machine to an Apple Silicon machine, you might have applications that can't even run on the computer. And over here you have a file browser which kind of lets you drill down into the folders to see those large files. But I actually have a free utility that I like better that I'll show you in just a second. So back in the storage settings, we'll click the I for iCloud Drive and we're going to click on open Apple ID settings. We're using 590 megabytes of storage, which is not a lot. And here you're gonna see an option for optimized Mac storage. And just like with optimizing for the TV app, this will essentially get rid of anything on the Mac that you're not using. It keeps it on iCloud so you can still access them the same way, but it doesn't keep a local copy on the computer until you need it. And then it opens just like any other native file. Now back in settings, general storage, we can look at messages taking up over 10 gigabytes of space. And you can see the large attachments sitting inside of messages. Now you can actually just select one or many of these old videos or photos or files that you've sent through iMessage and just go ahead and delete them. But another option is actually to reduce the amount of messages that you keep. 
And to do that, you're gonna to go to Messages and Settings, and inside here, you'll see an option for Keep Messages. For me, it's set to forever, and it's probably set to forever for most of you by default as well. But you can actually change this to one year or 30 days. And that means that after one year or 30 days, messages will just be deleted from your account so you don't have to see them anymore and they don't take up any space. Of course, that could be a big problem if you use it for keeping a lot of photos and videos from friends and family, but that is an option and it could reduce a significant amount of space. And that's a similar story with photos as well using 9.63 gigabytes. So if we open up photos and go to settings, you'll see an option here just like with the iCloud storage and the Apple TV storage, you can click on optimize max storage and it will keep small copies of a lot of your photos on the computer. But if you need the other ones, it will pull them on demand from iCloud. And this is huge because if you had all of the originals downloaded to your Mac, you might be using 40, 60, 80 gigabytes or whatever. So if you click this optimize max storage setting, it's going to slowly remove large copies of the files from your computer. Again, keep those on iCloud so you can still access them but free up the local space on this device. And the last thing I wanna show you is this Omni Disk Sweeper tool, which I mentioned before. This is a free utility that lets you see all of your files and find the biggest ones as well. So you can just go ahead and down that. It's a free utility. And when you open it up, you're going to see a list of your files. You can go ahead and click on your system drive, double click it, and it's going to start calculating all of the files on the disk for you. So we'll give it just a moment. And there we go. It's calculated about 181 gigabytes of storage used on this computer right now with my user folder being the largest at 138 gigabytes, 10 gigs for the system, eight gigs for the library and so on. So we'll just go ahead and click on users. Of course, it's going to be my profile. So we can see the temp folder is the biggest and inside there is a final cut folder. And in here is a very old project file. So I can actually just go ahead and click trash on that and delete it. So this is a similar tool to what we saw before in system preferences. It just gives you a different kind of layout. And I actually like this layout because it gets you into folders that the system tool doesn't. For example, if I click on library right here, the system tool is not going to show you this. And you can see the biggest offender of space is messages. And we've already talked about how we can clear up some of that space. Next, we can look at application support. We can see that Descript is taking up three gigabytes of space. Now I'm not really using Descript anymore, so I should probably use Clean My Mac X to remove it and all of its other little files. Other than that, I'm not really seeing anything that stands out that I should probably get rid of. Maybe some of these things in movies because these are probably leftover stuff from Final Cut Pro videos that I was working on. But other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Now, if you go through all of this and you just have not been able to clean out enough space or you still need to store more files on your computer, then your only option left is probably going to be something like this. This is an external storage drive. This is an OWC Envoy Pro FX. It's a Thunderbolt 3 drive. I do recommend this drive. This is the best drive when I did a comparison a while back comparing four different Thunderbolt drives. So I highly recommend this. It's really fast. It's Thunderbolt. So you get about 2,500 megabytes read and write per second, which is crazy fast. So what do you guys think? Are there better applications out there that can help you find and remove old crap from your Mac that you no longer need? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like Thunderbolt, I recently did a video comparing three of the best Thunderbolt 4 docks you can get. You can check out that video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.